you have eighteen thousand dollars in student loan debt. Yep. You don't have a degree from Adam State. Nope. And I'm not anywhere close to one. How many credit hours did you complete? Thirty six. Okay, that to me that's insane. Thirty six credit hours is a little over a year. Yeah. Right. Cause, and I've been here for three and a half. Yeah. I mean that's yeah. so stunning. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Watching Adams podcast. I'm Danny Ladoni. Today I'm joined by Alicia Carr. She's a former Adams State University student who talks about her experience at Adams State. She was at Adams State for about three years. She managed to earn 36 credit hours toward her 120 credit degree, racked up $18,000 in student loan debt, and finally decided that the university was not a good fit for her at this time. She talks about not being informed about which classes to register for her major, as well as struggling in developmental math class that was not for college credit, but was necessary in order for her to complete college-level math. She reflects on a number of reasons why she left Adam State, including low faculty pay versus high administrator pay, and the way in which faculty are treated at Adam State, which she considers very important given her family's own background in the teaching profession. Alicia shares her outlook as a student with student loan debt but without a degree, as well as her next steps and future plans in and out of higher education. All that and more on this edition of the Watching Adams podcast. I'm Alicia Carr. I am currently not in school. I'm working at Blue Peaks full time, working with special needs to help me uh, get my life on track with the degree that I want. When I was in school, I was a theater education major with a secondary in English. I was going to add a special need, a uh, special education minor. Can you just talk a little bit about how you found the school and why you decided to go to Adams? I um, found the school when I was in high school. My high school teacher, drama teacher, was giving us a list of all the best schools in Colorado for theater. And Adams State was the one that she most highly recommended and talked a lot about the program, handed us flyers, saw all sorts of cool pictures from all the plays and fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with it. And I knew from that moment on I was going to go to Adams State no matter what it took. So it sounds like you had a really strong initial impression you felt like the school was a good fit for you can you describe how your first year or two went and were you on track at that point for the degree that you were pursuing or what happened there first couple years were kind of rough <laughs> not gonna lie I um, didn't know what I was doing in terms of scheduling I asked nobody knew when you say you asked and nobody knew who did you ask what were you kind of asking about there was somebody in the scheduling department i i don't know what it was but he called me before i even got down here so maybe your advisor it, it wasn't my advisor it, it was somebody else who had no idea about who i was or what i was doing he called me and said hey i see that you haven't set up your schedule yet let's get that done i said okay cool and when I asked him what courses I needed to take, he had no idea. He said, well, you could take your basic courses. Th that, and that was all fine, but and he had no idea what my degree plan was, he, nothing. He had no idea what I needed for any of my actual classes for my degree. So at first you were kind of just going with the flow and it's a safe bet your first year or two that getting a lot of your gen eds out of the way is a, is a good idea. And then maybe you could focus more on the specifics of your degree later. How did that go for you? Were you doing well academically? Were you fitting in socially? Um, socially, I did just fine just because I had friends down here already who had already made friends. Um, academically, I did okay. I, I, I'm not going to say I was a great student, but I, I definitely feel like I did okay. The problem was I had to have some of my theater courses that first semester that I was down there or to be on track for my degree. And he didn't know that. And so, and I had no idea I had an advisor. Nobody told me that. I was I came down here very confused and disorganized. So it sounds like the people whose job it was to help put you in the classes you needed to be on track to graduate just didn't really do that. But you sounds like you weren't aware at the time. So when did you realize, oh, I'm not actually on track to get my degree? 
It took me a couple weeks. It didn't take me very long. Okay, so you weren't like a year or two into your degree. No, 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 yeah. not at all. I um, I don't know, probably, probably a month into it when Dr. Taylor approached me and said, Hey, do you know that I'm your advisor? Do you know anything about the theater program? I don't see you in here a lot. Because I had no theater classes, even though I needed them. So nobody told me. <laughs> so then Dr. Taylor, who's in the theater department, kind of approached you and you learned he was your advisor yeah. and you were one of his advisees. So over the next couple of years, how did things go? You took a variety of gen eds, theater coursework. What happened? It sounds like you finally were on the right track. Well, not exactly. I, I caught up a little bit but by the time my first semester was over, I was already behind. None of my credits from my other school transferred. I was going to Pikes Peak Community College, and I had a couple of theater classes over there that should have transferred, but didn't. Um, Any due reason to, why they didn't? I, I think it was just due to the fact that the syllabuses were just too different. I was okay with taking the classes again because Adam State, you know, got to get a whole different feeling for what they do and stuff. So I, that was really okay with me but by the time I had even learned what I needed to do or how to graduate on time I was already behind I was a whole semester behind by that point and felt very sh short every semester there afterwards. Alicia is probably about 5'2", as, as tall as I am, so she was already <laughs> feeling short. Always do. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's tough to hear that you were getting started. You have a lot of enthusiasm, but you were already behind. Did you make an effort to catch up? Did it look like you could still be on track to graduate? Um, I don't think I ever had any way to graduate on time. I think I was, because I wasn't going to take the course load that it took for me to be on time. I was already struggling as a student. I didn't need the 18 or 21 credit hours to catch up. Can I ask what you were struggling with or why you were struggling? The basic courses were the ones that really got me most of the time. Great example, math. I had a professor who would explain things and then we would get them and then he kept explaining and all of a sudden we were lost. The entire class. Nobody knew what was going on in that man's head. So is this a freshman <laughs> math class? Yeah, uh, no, it, I was in 095 or something like that. Okay, so this is a developmental this math class. Is a this developmental is developmental math class. An 0900 course is one that a student needs to take to get up to college level math and one that you actually don't get college credit for, yep. right? Because it's not college level, but you need it in order to progress to college math. Yep. So it's easy to understand how something like that could already help to Put you behind. So that being said, did you feel like they were able to help you get to the level you needed for college math or was oh, that a stumbling oh, block? Oh god no. Oh my gosh. I asked questions and I wanted to understand but all he said was this was high school math. You should have known. Th learned this back in high school. This was stuff I'd never even seen before. Wow. So how was I supposed to know any of this? How did you perform in high school in math? Pretty okay. I B's and up, C's maybe? Yeah, B's and C's. Oh yeah. Never got anything below a C in math. What was the highest level of math you completed in high school? Mm, statistics. Okay. Did you take algebra too? No. Okay. I took, I was in pre-algebra my first year, algebra my second, geometry my third, and then statistics my fourth. Okay, so you did have some algebra, sounds like algebra and pre-algebra before that, mm -hmm. uh, geometry course, and then also a, uh, a statistics course. Mm -hmm. Which should have been, according to him, enough training to give me enough knowledge to know what I was doing in this course. It, it was like this course was taken out of college math and labeled as a high school math course. So you felt like even though this was called high school math, essentially it was not college level. Oh, it was way above college You were saying level. there are things here that I never saw in high school. I've never even heard of most of what we learned. I stopped going to class after spring break. Wow. Because I was so far behind already. Did you have a tutor or were there any other outside resources to help you get caught up? I had no idea about the tutor center at that point mm. in time. I was first semester here stumbling around like an idiot. If you'd known about the tutor center, do you think that might have helped? Probably. I I ended up getting a math tutor towards the middle of the semester, just one of my friends, and I finally was starting to understand the material. By the point that I got the tutor, it was too late, but if I had known about the tutor center, would I have passed the class? 
probably. So just to summarize, you had some struggles with getting registered for the right classes. Some of the classes you were in were kind of uh, pre-college level and those were also still a struggle. Yep. So you were seeing yourself falling behind kind of in different ways, in multiple ways, but that doesn't necessarily mean even if you weren't on time to graduate that you wouldn't have graduated, but it sounds like that falling behind eventually caught up. So can you talk about your decision just not to go back to Adam State? Um, well, there was a lot of factors in that. And number one, prices are outrageous. Just if you don't have financial aid, it, it really is too bad, so sad. Can you talk about you. how you were paying for school? Before I dropped out, I was paying with FAFSA and all that, you know, the typical. So you were getting federal financial yep. aid. Uh, I was almost all covered. I think the most I had to pay was like 600 bucks to the school. Were you taking semester. out loans as well? I owe 18000 for from my FAFSA. But it sounds like you were taking out federal student loans, yeah, maybe I, not I private guess, student Yeah, loans. yeah, not private. Okay. I was not taking them out through a bank. Great, yeah. Just through yeah. the FAFSA. So you, you were taking out government subsidized student yes, loans yes, that you qualified for as a, yeah. as a student. So you'll have lower interest rates, but you still have $18,000 yeah. to pay back. They can't be discharged in bankruptcy. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is a senator from Massachusetts who said that the student loan industry has a set of borrowing conditions that would make the mafia envious, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they will, to the ends of the earth, it seems, oh, cracking yeah. down. So, and this is a major issue, but you have $18,000 in student loan debt. Yep. You don't have a degree from Adam State. Nope. And I'm not anywhere close to one. Yeah. How many credit hours did you complete? 36. Okay, that, to me, that's insane. 36 credit hours is a little over a year. Yeah. Right? Cause, and I've been here for three and a half. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. so stunning. So did you fail classes or what was going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I failed classes left and right because I didn't know about the help I could get. That was just for the first semester. I'm going to put part of it on me, obviously. But the whole atmosphere of the school not really wanting to help kind of made me not want to go get help because I felt like even at the tutor center, they wouldn't care. I'm just doing some quick math in my head. At the rate of $18,000 to get 36 credit hours, you would essentially have to be in debt $70,000 to complete a degree at the rate you were going. Yep, I yep. Mean, that, that's pretty stunning. <laughs> it, um, it is. So can you talk about some of the other factors that, uh, that ultimately had you decide? It sounds like you found yourself deeper and deeper in a hole and you decided it was time to stop digging. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I, I didn't want to get any more into debt. I didn't really want to go back to the school because if they're not going to care enough about me to help me not rack up $18,000 and only be one year in, then why should I give them any more of my hard-earned money? I figured, you know, from here on out, I'll just take a class here or there and pay it as I go. So you were planning even on a sort of slower schedule mm -hmm. to keep taking classes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. At a pace that maybe made more sense for absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then everything broke out about how they were being unfair to professors and how they were paying their higher ups outrageous amounts of money. And I decided that enough was enough. I was not going to give them any more of my money. If they were treating their professors correctly, sure. I, I'm a huge believer in treating your professors and teachers right. Can you talk about how you learned of some of these things and examples of, of what you consider to be unfair? Probably just the rumor mill started going, uh, friends who were still attending the school. But then you came out and said um, everything that was going on with you, the fact that they were kicking you off of campus for stuff that um, they had no proof of. Um, that I mean, they you're were... inside my house right now. I yeah. don't know how f threatened you feel. Or I, how... I don't feel threatened at all, and I never danger. have. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I thought I'd just check in. <laughs> I was in a classroom with you at night, and I never felt threatened. Even in the parking lot after <laughs> Even class, Even in the right? parking lot after class, yeah. not once. I, I was just shocked that a school who is supposed to be out there to help the community, supposed to be for the betterment of human society, would throw somebody under the bus like that, especially somebody who is so nice and so caring about his students. And that was the final shot for me. Just for my personal morals, I couldn't give them 
power over me with taking my money and, you know, stuff like that. I just, I couldn't. The first set of factors were how you felt like you were putting in all this effort, you were going into all this debt, and it just wasn't looking especially promising. And then you come to find out that faculty are being paid so much less, that administrators are being paid significantly oh, yeah. more. So there's... I mean, you guys make less than my dad does. Most of the professors over there make less than my dad does, and he's a high school prof or he's a high school teacher. Th that doesn't seem right to me. Where does I, he teach high school? He's a he's a James Ir Irwin Charter Academy up in Colorado Springs. Okay. Um, he makes sin significantly less there, but even as a as a tenure teacher at the high school that I went to, he was making not that much, and you guys are still you know, making less. Let me just ask, this is something a lot of students don't think about, but maybe because your dad is a teacher, it matters to you. Why should a student care what professors get paid at Adam State? Because they're there for the education. They're the only ones who really seem to care about us. They want what's best for us. They are the ones who help us go get jobs afterwards. The president doesn't do that. None of the board helps us get jobs. The only link that we have from high school to jobs, if we go through college, is the professors. And that is hugely important that they get treated correctly. Because without them, the school wouldn't run. Students wouldn't be coming. So if you could say something to either the board or the administration uh, with regard to your situation, if people are listening to this podcast, what would you say that could have made things better for you? Get the resources out there. Let every student know, freshman orientation, first day they're there, or even before, say, here's the resources that we have. Please use them. And then advocate them. Because I'm sure there's pamphlets out there for all the resources and stuff. But after day one, you don't hear about them. You get trapped into this world of crazy college life. And the help goes to the wayside. So they need to be out there with signs saying, hey, struggling come to the writing center. You need a tutor, go to the tutor center. The board needs to become actively involved in the student's life when it comes to their academics. If I were to go back and redo all of it, I probably wouldn't pick Adam State. As much fun as I've had down here and as awesome as some of my experience have been, I feel like a lesser student than I've ever felt in my entire life. And I haven't been the best of students. If the board would care, if presidents would care, if anybody but the professors would care, I think Adam State would have been the best decision I've ever made in my life. But if they're not going to invest in their students or their professors, I would have done it all over again. So you went to community college at Pikes Peak. Those credits didn't transfer. You went to Adam State for three years. You managed to get 36 credit hours. I don't mean to laugh when I say that, but I'm just doing the math here and I'm thinking with $18,000 in debt, uh, a quarter of the way toward a four-year degree, what do you want to do next? Have you given up on higher education? Do you want to go back to school at some point? I would love to go back to school at some point. Absolutely. But if I can go out and get a real world skill for right now, that's what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm already planning on getting my CNA license. So why, why go to school when you can go learn a trade and actually make some money in the meantime? It's not my final passion. I don't want to be a CNA forever. But for now, while I get my life figured out, that is absolutely what I'm going to do. It sounds like um, going into debt for a degree is a pretty expensive way to figure your life out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way too expensive. <laughs> Adam State is still a good school. I, I'm not going to bash on it too hard, but they need to learn how to treat their students and their faculty. You said earlier that you would hope that people other than faculty would care do you feel like the faculty you had did care? Oh my gosh, I, I've only felt like one of them didn't. And a certain even, math professor, yeah. maybe? And even then, I, I felt like he cared a little bit. I think my dad's a math teacher, so... Oh, so you have a high standard for math teachers oh, in your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I think, I think it's just a math teacher thing where they think 
they know what they're saying and they think that we'll understand it, but those of us who struggle with math just don't. <laughs> so in general, it sounds like you believe the faculty really do care. Oh my gosh, I have had great experiences with the faculty. They are amazing people. That being said, what would it look like for the administration and the board of trustees to care more about students? If they want to take your advice, how would they go about doing that? Make more programs on campus. Get get their students involved. Even when I was living in the dorms, nobody came out of their dorm room. They were all just kind of stuck there. And when they came out, there was nobody walking campus. They were either in the cafeteria or in their friend's room. No social life. There, there really is no social life down here. So the board or whoever needs to find ways to get the students involved. Get us to love the school. Get us involved in the community. Get us involved in just the programs they already have. Has Adam State made any effort to reach out to you and try and um, help you to complete your degree or check in and say, hey, you, you spent several years going to school here, but you didn't get a degree. What can we do to help you complete that? I got a bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine you got a bill. Um, parking tickets. <laughs> you got parking tickets I got a, a bill. parking ticket. <laughs> so three years at Adam State, $18,000 in debt, and Adam State leaves you with a bill and parking tickets. Yep. <laughs> I think I'm going to end the podcast there. <laughs> Alicia, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you, you for having me. <laughs> you strike me as a very uh, positive, outgoing, friendly person, and I, I hope you find success in other ways, even if it wasn't through this, this set of programs at Adam State at this time in your life. Oh, thank you. I try. <laughs>